Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. Mike check. I want to address. I want to address everybody that might be here today. Everybody that might be here today at Liberty Park. At the Liberty Hall. At the Liberty Hall. Maybe waiting for the bus. Maybe waiting for the bus. May not know. May not know why we're here today. Why we're here today. I'm out here because I want peace and justice to be done. Because what happened to this young baby, a child, is unjust. It shouldn't have happened. You understand? I wouldn't hope this on an animal instead of a human being. You know? And so my heart go out to the mother. My heart is broken inside. Each child, I'm a mother also. And I feel this mother pain. I went through something similar but different form of fashion with my grandbaby in Sanford, Florida. She was the one, the father that went on the bus. And last year in October, I went down there and we marched for justice and peace to protect other kids from that happened to them also. So that's, that's why I'm out here using my voice to make it hear, heard for other people to know this is not right. This is not right. We're here. We're, We're here, here to stand, to stand in solidarity, in solidarity with Trayvon Martin, with, with Trayvon Martin, Martin. And and family. Family. with thousands of others, with thousands of others marching, marching in cities across the United States today, in cities across the United States today. It's just served as another reminder that our country still has a ways to go that too many people step into roles of protection and caring for the community and they wind up acting out their personal prejudices and I think that's exactly what happened in the case of Trayvon Martin's death. On February 26th, On February 26th a young black teenager, a young black teenager, a football player, a football player, football player 17 years old, 17 years old, was killed, was killed, was killed by a man named George Zimmerman. By a man named George Zimmerman. To this day, to this day, George Zimmerman has not been brought. George Zimmerman has not been brought. Not been brought up on charges. Not been brought up on charges. Nor arrested. Nor arrested. We are here. We are here to protest. To protest. The callous indifference. The callous indifference. indifference. That the Sanford Police Department has shown, has shown Trayvon Martin and his family. Trayvon Martin and his family. I'm gonna say this. I, I, uh, I hope that I'm not offending anybody when I say this, but it's like it's open season on bats. Now this is I don't know. I just I've always had a thing about the South. And I, you know, it's just that it seems as though things are just worse in the South than they are up here, or either they're bad up here, and just as bad as they are down there. And it's just like nothing's going to change. Now, you know, you're trying to do good, you want to do good, you're trying to do better, you want to do better. But all of a sudden, here comes somebody to knock you back down. Uh, and, you know, and then you get disgusted. You know, I mean, you know, and you start, you know, what's your boy? What, you know, what, what's the worth it? You know, and this little boy, I mean, you know, <laughs> he's already been there. He was, left his father's house. He's going to the store. It's raining. He's got a hoodie on his head to protect his head from getting wet. Now, this fool didn't see this little boy coming out of there the first time, seeing that he's supposed to be the uh, neighborhood watch there and he's the only one out there. Uh, he should have seen, seen him the first time when he left. He's had that seen him before. He's visiting his father. Lives. So I'm quite sure he's seen this little boy. I think this is just something that he wanted to do. That's the way I do it. And, and man, I mean, now he's calling the police and they're telling them, you know, don't follow him, leave him alone. And he's ignoring what they're saying and he's found them anyway. And 
and the kid is scared and he's trying to get away from him and he run for him up. Well, if the kid hit him, evidently the kid's defending himself. I mean, what are you doing attacking a 17 year old child who's got Skittles and a pop in his hand? I'm out here to protest the killing of Trayvon Martin and beyond that to uh, protest the failure of the Sanford Police Department to arrest his murderer. I'm out here today because it just so happens that this demonstration in support of justice for Trayvon Martin coincides with the work I'm doing here at MCC, which is Mentors in Violence Prevention um, training. And so we're in the first, at the end of the first day of this training, and I heard about this um, demonstration yesterday, and I thought, oh, there's absolutely no way I'm missing it. Justice! Justice! For Trayvon! For Trayvon! Justice look like? It looks like something concrete, like here in Rochester, for instance, an independent civilian review board for police activity. And I think that's something that needs to be implemented across the country, city by city. Justice looks like training and monitoring of our law enforcement officers so that they have, and, and not just law enforcement officers, but anyone who comes in contact with our children and with our most vulnerable citizens, training so that they understand how to work with people and how not to operate on a preconception, a prejudice that, that they were raised with. In this particular case, um, that would look like um, arresting the murderer and well, the presumed murderer. But well, given all the evidence against him, it's pretty obvious. Um, investigating him fairly, and then when that evidence almost certainly shows that he's guilty, charging him appropriately. I hope I hope they arrest this man. Not just for the sake of Trevon and his parents, but for the sake of all the young blacks in this country. Because there, there are going to be many more that are going to get shot behind a lot of BS for no reason at all. And it's got to stop. It really has. Before someone really gets hurt a lot worse than when in this time, I mean, how much worse can you get hurt in your death? What can they do to you after you're dead? It's it's uh, it's kind of hard to say. You know, we live under a system that uh, we appropriately criticize for uh, uh, for the brutality of it. A prison in a white supremacist system, a prison industrial white supremacist system uh, that that we uh, that we appropriately criticize. Um, and so demanding that the person who shot him be subjected to the same system seems a little off at hand. Now, uh, but at the same time, uh, we, we don't have an alternative system of accountability in place yet. And so we're placed in a, a somewhat of a difficult situation. You know, we want to talk about restorative justice and we want to talk about other uh, uh, mechanisms of redress. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the flaw is much easier to define in that there is currently no steps towards any kind of redress that are happening. That's the easy part to notice. Uh, the harder part is, is, you know, like inside of a radical critique, you know, what does this mean? Uh, for the moment, I, I take the guidance of the, uh, the young man's family. This young man's family is calling for prosecution. And um, if, I, you know, if I really want to stand in solidarity, I have to listen to their voice. And, and, and we, do, we have no other alternatives. And it's actually their voice is the most important one anyway. And so it doesn't seem perfectly just, but uh, you know, that, that, that seems to be probably the most appropriate path uh, right now, best I can tell. I believe George Zimmerman needs to be tried for something. Uh, do I know what Florida law allows for? Murder, maybe not. Manslaughter, voluntary. And it's such cold justice. 
Okay, um, I feel your pain. Can we ever hope that justice might include that this never happens to someone else's son or daughter? Of course not, because it's what we're going to get. Right? Um, if more people become aware, if more people become politically motivated, if more people, if this could be a kind of a catalyst for people to start opening up their minds. We want to stay! We want to stay! We stand in solidarity! We stand Well, my heart, my prayer will go out to the family and the one that done it. You understand? But I just want to see justice done. It's too bad that that little boy got shot. And I feel sorry for his family. I feel sorry for his family. Nothing is going to bring them back. But the only thing that they can do now in order for them people to get justice for their child's family to get justice is arrest that man. Arrest him. That's the justice, that's the justice that that family That's the justice that they're going for. That's it. Just that my heart is open. I have an adult son and I now have two grandsons. And I've been around for almost 62 years. So I've seen some prejudice, I've seen racism, I've experienced it in my own life. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that my son and my grandsons and my granddaughter, by virtue of the fact that they're people of color, will also continue the same kind of prejudice and racism that I've seen in these 62 years. So my heart is with the Martin family, and I hope they know that thousands of people across this country and millions of people around the world Justice! Justice! For Trayvon! For Trayvon!